Hello, in today's video we are going to create a 3D model out of this isometric drawing to exercise the skill on part building. You can watch my videos on, Autodesk Inventor Interface, Navigation and Sketch Constraints for detail explanations of some operations used in this video. As we can see this part will be constructed mainly with cylinders. So, to begin we click on New, on the Quick Access Toolbar, since the part is in them we select the metric template, if you select a part template in inches, it can be changed after to them if necessary, but as a good practice we select the drawing matching unit system. Click Start 2D Sketch in the Sketch panel, click the X and Y plane. On the Sketch tab, Create Panel, we select Circle. We select the center the center point of the coordinate system as a good practice which facilitates the frequent use of the origin planes and axes. Type the diameter, press the letter E on the keyboard to invoke extrude, type the distance to extrude, in this case 8 mm. Let's start another 2D sketch, another circle. If we go to the drawing, we see that it is a threaded rod or cylinder. The thread is a metric thread of 14 by 1, so in this case the diameter of the cylinder is 14 mm. The 3D model does not have to be dimensioned with the nuances of fits and tolerances. You can specify precise dimensions and tolerances when you make a drawing of the part for the machinist. So back in the 3D model we type 14 for diameter, press E for extrude, type 38 for the distance, then OK. In the drawing we see that the part has a thread relief. In this detail view we can see the dimensions. In the 3D model we will create this feature with a revolving cut. We start a 2D sketch, we go to the browser and expand the origin folder, select the YZ plane, which goes through the center of the part. To be able to work with the part edges, we click Project Cut Edges in the Create Panel of Sketch tab. To be able to see what we are doing we go to the navigation bar and change the visual style to wireframe. We draw a rectangle and dimension it. We can go to the 3D Model tab, Create Panel and click on Revolve or we just press the letter R in the keyboard to invoke the Revolve command. In the Revolve dialog box, we select the Profile, select Cut, and for Axis we go to the browser and select the Z axis. It passes through the center of the part since the center of the first extrusion we placed it on the center point of the coordinate system. Press OK to execute it. To add the two fillets at the root of the thread relief, we go to the 3D Model tab, Modify Panel and click on Fillet. Type 1 for the radius and select the edges where we want to place them. Press OK or Enter to finish. Let's add the thread by clicking the command in the Modify panel. A dialog box appears, we select the face where we want the thread. Let's specify it. Notice that the software already selected a thread according to the diameter of the cylinder. Since for the same diameter we can have different pitches in metric, or threads per inch in English, make sure we have the right designation. In this case it is a 14 by 1 thread. It was not specified in the drawing but let's assume it is a right hand which it is much more common. Back in the drawing we can look at the center bore. With basic designing knowledge we can determine that this is a clearance counter bore hole for an M5, since the through hole is 5.3 mm. In the 3D model, start a 2D sketch on the back view of the part, we place a point in the center,
In the 3D Model tab, Modify panel we click on Hole, or just press H on the keyboard to invoke the command. On the Hole dialog box, we select Clearance, Counterbore, for standard we can select the DIN standard since it is on the whole notation in the drawing. ISO or ANSI metric standards will have the same specifications. Counterbore holes are usually for socket head cap screws. We select M5. Let's check the dimensions against the drawing notation. As we can see our through hole is a little larger. Let's change the diameter. There are three options for hole diameter in the standard, close, normal and loose. Select the close one, and the hole diameter matches now. We are through all, the press OK or enter to finish with the command. Let's do now the radial holes, here are the dimensions, it seems to be centered on the side of the flange. So back in the 3D model we are going to create a hole, for it we need a 2D drawing for the center point. To create a drawing on a curved surface we need a plane tangent to it. To get this plane we click on plane in the work features panel. We go to the browser and in the origin folder we select the plane we want to be parallel to. In this case the YZ. We click on the surface we want to be tangential to and a plane is placed there. The selection of the origin plane was a little arbitrary since the holes are not really timed to any other feature of the part. For more on work planes you can see my video on the subject. Once we have the plane, we create the 2D sketch, project the cut edges, click on point and hover approximately over the midpoint of the edge and place it when highlights. Press H on keyboard for hole. The hole dialog box appears with the previous hole dimensions. We change it to the new one. A regular hole, 4.3 mm in diameter, 10 mm deep. The drill point matches what we see in the drawing. Press OK to finish. We can change the visual style to wireframe to have an idea if we did well. Back in shaded with edges. Right click over the plane and click visibility to hide it. To do the rest of the holes we click on circular pattern on the pattern panel. A dialog box appears, for feature we select the hole on the browser, for rotation axis we select the coordinate Z axis. It has already 6 as the occurrence count, and 360 the occurrence angle. Press OK to end command. As we can see the pattern of hole was created. Back in the drawing we say that we have some chamfers in the part, so let's do them. Click chamfer, type 1 for distance. Notice that we have the two equal distances input is highlighted, that will generate a 45 degrees chamfer as the drawing is calling. Click the edges, click OK to end command. Back in the drawing there are three more chamfers to place. Click on chamfer this time 0.5 mm and select edges. It seems that we have finished the part. This is an exercise video to get you familiar with the commands needed to create a part in Autodesk Inventor. Working with the program, investigating new ways to do a task and consulting the software help will develop further your skills. Thanks for watching. 
I hope you found this video instructive. If you like this video make sure to subscribe for more.